MyLabs Enthusiasts. This is Jay, aka MyLabs. Uh, I burned up a lot of time in part one of this series talking about the rail and the cart in the Dynamic Perception Dolly Kit. In part two here, I'm going to start talking about the MX2 controller that controls the system. I was getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, so I decided to come inside for this section. Okay, to talk about the MX2 controller, I've got everybody's favorite time-lapse camera here, the 5D Mark II. Uh, of course, this again is the motor uh, of the system. And then here's the actual MX2 controller. So let's uh, look, take a closer look at it here. Here is the MX2 controller. As you can see, uh, there's not an enclosure yet. We're working on the enclosure right now. Uh, but basically what it is, is a shield that attaches to an Arduino via the the pin structure that goes to the Arduino. Um, the Arduino is essentially the brains of the of the operation. It holds the entire program that makes the uh, MX2 work. Here's the power supply over here and a USB for loading future firmwares. You can find the entire open source program at openmoco.org. For the time being, I've just simply Velcroed the Arduino onto the cart and then the shield connects directly onto the Arduino. The MX2 controller can control two DC motors up to one amp each over here through these ports. It can control a camera trigger via this port right here and then these are future ports for uh, future features. In the middle, you'll see the button system for the user interface, and of course an LCD for the uh, graphic user interface. Okay, so now let's connect it up. I'm going to put the motor into the port 1 right here. The lower right hand corner is uh, for motor 1. And then I'm going to connect the camera trigger. So the camera trigger goes in here and connects into the camera over here. Okay, now let's talk about power supply. The easiest way to, to power the system is via 12 volts. I'm just using a simple 12 volt, 5 amp hour battery. It weighs about a pound. Um, we don't include the battery with the system, so you'll have to find your own battery. There's a lot of options out there. 12 volts is very standard. Um, in this case, uh, this battery has some simple F2 connectors and then this is a standard 12 volt barrel. You can find this is basically the same barrel that you will find connected to most cigarette lighters for car type connectors. So what I did is I simply went to Radio Shack, I got a car connector that connected to a cigarette lighter style connector. I cut it off and I just connected it to my to these terminals uh, via the battery. Just a quick note, usually the positive side of these wires is the one with a white stripe on it and the ground or negative side is the one that does not have a stripe on it so that it corresponds with the correct polarity at the um, connector. So let's go ahead and connect this thing up and power up the system and start looking at the really cool stuff. Okay, so in goes the power supply down here, right below that uh, future port. And you'll see the system um, turn on, MX2 Dolly engine. Okay, so when you power on the system, all of your main functions are right there at your fingertips. To cycle through these main functions, you use the right and left arrow, arrow buttons. So you can either cycle right or left through the main functions. Here are the main functions. On and off, of course. The interval, and yes that means that because we're connected to the camera, we don't need an intervalometer or external uh, interval timer. You can just toss that out for this application. So right now it's set for one second. Um, intervals. Next in the in the cycle is uh, direction and speed for motor one and that corresponds to this port right here and then direction and speed for motor two 
and then over here is the amount of shots that have been taken after you turn on the system. So all of your basic functions are right here. So let's cycle over and the up down buttons change the values. So let's move this up to three seconds intervals and then we'll move over and change it from right to left. Um, then let's uh, bring the speed up to, let's say, oh, why not four inches per minute. That's, that's the value with the, with the eye here. That means it's giving you inches per minute. So now we've got a basic setup right there and we're ready to go. So let's cycle back to the on off and our camera over here is all set up for whatever the scene might might be. Of course you want to use manual and uh, get all your settings on your camera right and then we just hit on and you can hear it moving and you can hear the camera snapping away. Of course it's going to slowly uh, move out of the frame on me here but you can see also the shots being taken. So. All right, so let's stop it. And now let's uh, cycle back and I'll turn it the opposite direction and cycle over and here, we'll start it again. Now you'll notice that each time you turn it on and off, the um, counter restarts for you. So basic setups are that simple. Uh, this gets you going very quickly, no need to screw around with a lot of different settings or searching into menu systems to get it going. You're, the minute you get it all connected and set up your settings, you're off and running just like that. I love it. So in terms of advice on settings, this is a good relationship to start with. Two seconds at four inches per minute is just right and will give you nice and smooth moves as long as you don't have objects, say, super close to the lens. The further objects get, get from the lens, the, the faster you can go. The closer you might want to drop that down. So this will give you a good, play, a good starting point. Two seconds at four inches per minute. Now this is an inverse relationship. So if we go up to four seconds intervals, we need to drop the speed down to two seconds, I'm sorry, two inches per minute. There we go. So it's as you increase one value, you need to decrease the other value. So we doubled, we doubled the the interval, so we need to half the speed. So that's a good relationship right there, and this one's fine too, four seconds at uh, two inches per minute. So now let's look at some advanced features of the MX2 engine. So one of the coolest things about this system is that it allows you to, to work in two separate modes. It can move, it can work in continuous mode, which it's which that's the default right now it's uh, set to continuous so if I press on you'll notice actually let's uh, let's reverse it here so it's going the opposite direction and then back up so if I turn it on you'll notice that the cart is moving conti continuously and the shutter is firing as it goes okay so the other style of shooting is to wait for the shutter to fire, then move, then wait for the shutter to fire. And that's generally called move, shoot, move. So to get into that, to, to change the system to, to move, shoot, move, what we'll, we'll need to go into the menu system. The far left button here is the um, will enter us into the menu system. So we press the button there, and that gets us into the menu system. And let's just go, go all the way down to settings, and enter again to get into the to the settings. Um, here's where the motor display is. So this is uh, either inches per minute or percentage. 
But what we're looking for is this motor SL mod. And what this does, I'm going to enter in here. So currently it's in pulse mode, which is essentially continuous. It's pulsing the motor, but it's moving continuously. If I um, move up or down, it'll cycle through. Here's the other mode, interleave. And interleave is the move, shoot, move mode. So once we've chosen interleave, we can uh, accept it by pressing the enter button or the menu or enter button. And then to get out of this menu, we press the far right button to get back. So now we're back to the, to the menu and then to the very top. So just by setting that one setting, that has changed it to move shoot mode. So now if I turn it on, you'll notice that it shoots, then moves. Now, now if you want to make sure that the shutter is not triggered during the move, as you notice there, it was sort of happening right almost instantaneously as the, as the shutter was firing. Let's go back into the menu system and we're going to create a delay before the, the shutter will, will go off. So let's go into the menu system and the shutter delay is in the camera settings. So we're going to enter into the camera settings and go down to the exposure delay and enter in. Right now the exposure delay is set for half a half a second. This is in milliseconds. So let's up that a little bit more. Uh, let's, let's up it to three quarters of a, of a second so that we can really see. Actually, let's, let's go all the way up to one second. And you notice uh, I can hold down the button and it will accelerate so you can get into higher numbers. That's one of the ways to change the values quickly. So let's get it back to about one second. Okay, that's close enough. So now there's going to be a one second delay before the, the, the shutter is triggered. So we're going to enter to enter this value. And then to get out of the menu system, we use the far right button to move our way out of the menu system. So now, let's keep it in the frame. I'm going to reverse it so that it stays in the frame here. Um, and let's back it up and turn it on. Now you notice there's that delay. So now the, so now the move is only happening after the shutter is finished. So that's one of the major features of the MX2 Dolly is that you can change it from the this continuous motion or this move shoot move mode. A very powerful uh, part of the engine.